We're talking World Cup qualifiers, the top jersey sellers in MLS, and Wells Thompson gets his wish next on The Daily. Welcome to The Daily. It's Tuesday, September 11th with Simon Borg. I'm Jason Seguini. We are starting in Columbus where the U.S. national team faces what some are calling a must-win game. Yesterday there were questions about the lineup, but Jurgen Klinsmann came out and answered those. Carlos Bocanegra at center back, Steve Terundolo at right back. Simon, he's got those answers. Does he have the answers to solve this uh, riddle that is Jamaica? Look, the back line seems to be set. The midfield is the issue that everyone has. Not enough width, not enough possession. We'll see how he addresses that. I'm not sure he has the personnel to do it, though. But he's confident. He was asked by a Jamaican reporter yesterday in the pregame press conference, and he was asked, what happens if the U.S. loses this game? He says, don't worry, it's not going to happen. So that gives you his mindset. Look, it's not a must win necessarily. They're still in mathematically, whether it's a, a draw, even a loss. But a win here would establish uh, that, that, that U.S. as a power now uh, heading into the hexagonal, which they desperately need. Yeah, reestablish, I think, because everyone thought going in the U.S. was a power. But Jamaica certainly put some doubt in. That game, 8 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. And of course, there's one other game we're keeping close tabs on, and that is Canada going down to Panama, also at 8 p.m. Eastern time. It's on Sportsnet in Canada. The story ahead of this game, Jason, is the fans, the Panamanian fans, two nights in a row now, outside the Canadian team hotel, making as much noise as they can, holding parties essentially, even the police getting involved, the Panamanian Federation tweeting out so that the fans come to the hotel to make as much noise. Um, but the Canadian team, they said they've seen this before, they love the field conditions that they're going to see at the Estadio Romel Fernandez, and weather was a concern, but it seems like it's just going to be overcast. Uh, look, it's the reverse of the U.S. group, all uh, Panama here has to do is win, otherwise their qualification now uh, is at risk. All right, a lot to watch tonight. 24 Under 24 continues on MLSsoccer.com today with another four names, the first of which may be a little bit of surprise that he's down this low. Freddie Adu at number 19. Yeah, the interesting thing about Freddie Adu at 19, it comes on the heels of this moment he has with the Philadelphia Union. He missed the game because of a team matter. Uh, he questioned getting subbed off, and then he didn't play for two games. He didn't start for two games, I should say. Uh, so it's, it comes at a particular moment for him. Uh, but what I love about the 24 under 24 series is the scouting reports. We get the good and the bad from technical directors and coaches around the league, and they're pretty frank when it comes to what Freddie Adu needs to do better. Uh, and they talk about consistency. They're very frank. Uh, I think the fans will love to, to read more about that. All right, we'll check that out as the list continues to count down. Freddie Adu on another list that we just saw uh, come out yet today on the site, actually. And it's the top jersey sales of all MLS players. It's the first time, really, that we've ever seen this list. Freddie Adu came in at number 20 on that list. Interestingly enough, one behind his teammate, Roger Torres, at number 19. At the top of the list, though, no surprises. You have your David Beckham. Thierry Henry's Tim Cahill up there actually Landon Donovan Dwayne De Rosario Freddie Montero Simon who surprised you on this list you know Chris Pontius his star power is building he's at number 12 on the list from DC United and then a little factoid here number four after the three DPs in LA most popular Jersey Mike McGee he's at number 23 uh, so he's on this list a final last bit of news from last night Wells Thompson finally gets his wish getting the trade from Colorado. It actually surprised him, though, where he went, Simon. Yeah, he ended up going to the Chicago Fire, who landed a very important piece uh, in the stretch run here. Uh, Wells Thompson, very versatile. He gives you 100%, runs all day, decent technically. Uh, so this is going to be a, an interesting piece. Uh, in a midfield that's a little crowded, Marco Papa just left. So maybe that's Wells Thompson's hope that he can maybe take over for uh, Papa. All right, probably not going to reflect in the power rankings just yet, but the power rankings will be out today. Not a lot of action last week. We'll see if there's any movement. And I should remind everyone, before those qualifiers tonight, don't forget to check out Extra Time Radio. Simon and the guys had everything covered short of having Jorge Deli Valdez on, but they have Jamaica, the U.S., and Canada covered with your guests. Kurt Larson from the Toronto Sun was in Panama. He set the scene. We talked to Andy Williams about Jamaica. He said some interesting things tactically how they work. He was teammates with a lot of those guys. And then Taylor Twellman trying to figure out how Jurgen Klinsmann needs to set up this team to turn it around from what happened in Kingston. All right, you can see that on MLSsoccer.com. 
buzzsprout.com slash extra time. You can also get it on Buzzsprout or Stitcher. I'm headed to Columbus. Hopefully it's a great game tonight. We'll be back on The Daily tomorrow. Scoring phenom Freddie Montero looks to keep Seattle in the hunt for the Western Conference crowd as they travel to Portland to take on scorer Chris Boyd in the Timbers. Major League Soccer, Portland versus Seattle, September 15th on NBC.